This is the Mini Hampton. It's one of a range of mini special editions named after key places in London. And this particular car is named after the famous Hampton Court Palace. There we have it in the background. But if this was really named after Hampton Court, surely it would be called the Mini Hampton Court. Quite. But just up the river, we have Hampton, home of business car manager towers. And that's where we're going to test the car. There are, however, many similarities between this car and Hampton Court and its owner, Henry VIII, or at least when Henry was in his youth. It's handsome, smart, erudite and intelligent, this car. It has nice leather seats, fit for a king. It has special blue paintwork with dams and inserts. There are dams and inserts even on the interior. And there are special alloy wheels that really mark out this car as something different from your normal Mini. But unlike one of Henry's cohorts, Cardinal Wolsey, it's not at all spiteful on tax. With CO2 emissions of 115 grams kilometer, you can expect to pay company car tax at 13%. It's powerful too. Under the bonnet, there's a whopping two liter engine, the biggest ever fitted to a Mini. It's a bit of a flyer. There's 0 to 62 in 8.6 seconds and plenty of head snapping torque when you accelerate. And while it's got all that power, you can still get over 54 MPG. There's the usual go-kart handling you expect from any Mini. And because it's a Cooper S, there's also, shall we say, fairly firm sporting suspension. So all in all, it's got great business credentials to go with its upmarket image. A bit like Hampton, really. Hampton Swimming Pool, a wonderful 1930s built open air Lido. And Hampton Football Club, or Bied Sun. And our great local pub, the Railway Bell, but we know it as the Dip. And there's also Hampton Business Park, which is home to Chateau Musard. Fabulous Lebanese red wine. If you've never tasted it, I suggest you do. It's fantastic. Now, the Mini Hampton is only available in this Clubman edition. That's mini speak for an estate car. But actually what you get is a much more practical version of their hatchback. Now one of the really nice features of this is this particular one where you can just open the boot remotely. Fabulous, love it. Put your briefcases in, your, your bits and pieces, your shopping, or as we're here, a case of Chateau Mazar, which slips in very nicely. The similarities with Henry VIII do continue with this car, and they are possibly the more unfortunate ones. I'm thinking about Henry in later life. This car, at least in this Cooper SD version, is just a bit too bombastic, a bit too much of everything. There's, a bit like Henry, too much power. It's quite difficult to drive it smoothly. And the ride is also very, very firm. And there is also available the Cooper D model. Now, for many businesses, I think that would be a better bet. It's got lower CO2 emissions. In fact, the car qualifies for 100% first year allowances. There'll be lower company car tax. There's over 70 MPG. And all round, it's a much more usable, friendlier car to drive. Interestingly, it's the same conclusion that Giles Brown has reached. Giles is a small business owner and the event organiser of Eco Velocity, the Green Motor Show. I took the, uh, the SD out thinking, well, let's try everything. And um, I found that while it was, uh, it was a, a riot to drive, it was, it was, it was frankly too much. Um, and, uh, and as a result, I thought, well, you know, it's actually quite a lot of money to make the step up from um, the, the Cooper diesel up to the, uh, the, the Cooper diesel S or the SD. Um, and I, I decided that actually the uh, the Cooper diesel was uh, was more than enough for me, and uh, and I've slashed my motoring costs enormously. So uh, I'm going to be a very happy motorist. The Mini Hampton. Surely every small business in Hampton should have one of these, but perhaps not the Cooper SD version. See you next time.